Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so this week, we're going to talk a little bit about our upcoming breedings that we're having next week that we're going to be um, <clears throat> taking place. So Maggie is in heat. Um, she started like Monday. She also, um, we also have Nala that's in heat too. It's they share a room, and it's like almost when you get one in heat. Another one will go in heat. Sometimes we'd have four girls in heat. Um, we don't always breed everybody that comes into heat. Sometimes we, as you know, we skip heats. We, you know, we do stuff like that. Or sometimes we do breed back to back. But, um, so we have Magnolia and Nala that came into heat last Monday. So what I'm going to do today, today is Saturday, is I'm going to um, kind of give them some, they're not actually ready for breeding, but I want to get the ones that I have paired up, kind of just spend some time together with each other. Um, so I am pairing up Farley. He's our biggest Dane. Um, he's 179 pounds. He's our Merrill Mantle. We are pairing him up with Magnolia. Magnolia is a first time mom. She's our Fawn Mantle. Um, she comes from Eva and Hurley. She's a big girl, uh, hefty, hefty, hefty. So they should um, produce some really big puppies. I'm kind of curious on what they're gonna produce too. Uh, Magnolia has a lot of colors that she carries. Um, and Farley's pretty much only been bred with like kind of like the same girl. So I'm really not sure like giving with a different, um, you know, set of colors, what he would throw off. So, and I, um, I just wanted to to pair them up for the first time. I will uh, pair uh, Magnolia up with Diesel. He's our uh, mantle tan point. Maybe her next litter that she has will be with Diesel. But right now, um, Farley's you know a good stud, a mature stud. He knows what he's doing. So, and I'm kind of curious to see what they would have. So that's why I'm doing them first. So today I'll um, take Farley and Maggie and let them spend some time together. They can play, do whatever they want. They have been together before, roommates, um, when Ebby uh, was pregnant. Um, I t she came out of the room and, and Maggie kind of went in there and stayed with Farley so he wasn't lonely. So they do see each other, they just normally don't go out together because Maggie's um, younger and Farley usually hangs out with Ebby so that's why that is um our other one is nala so nala i'm going to try with diesel uh we'll see how it goes nala is the one that had a singleton um last spring um so i really haven't posted on our page that i was breeding her but i am going to breed her i want to see um if it was just a fluke last time or i was off with timing timing is everything so I could have just been off uh, timing and we ended up with a singleton so this time I'm going to try with diesel and she plays with diesel all the time so they diesel absolutely loves her so there's nothing new there but I'll just put them out together he's been sniffing and you know he's a new stud so he doesn't really know what he's doing so if it doesn't pan out it doesn't pan out no big deal um, but we are going to try. We're just curious to see if Nala just had, you know, a singleton for, you know, our timing off, her ovulation or something. So we're going to try that. She was bred with Hurley last time. And Hurley's a great stud, too. Um, they tied twice. And she had more, but it looked like she had absorbed them. And because in the beginning at 30 days, I do an ultrasound and I did see more sacks. So I was like, oh, she's going to have a good, you know, not a huge litter, but I did see multiple sacks. So that usually, if you see them, you usually end up having more than actually what you see for the sacks. But that wasn't the case with her. So um, she, you know, she just had the singleton. So we're going to try that with Diesel and uh, Nala and see if all goes well, then great. If it doesn't, then yeah. It wasn't meant to be so we shall see we do have a lot of deposits for magnolia's litter um if nala ends up taking then we'll have you know more open spots too i won't know for 30 days but both the girls came into heat on the same time 
uh, Monday, so today is, it's about, it's Saturday, so it's only five days into it. So they're def definitely probably not ovulated yet. Um, typically, um, they don't ovulate till day 11. So that's a day 11 of starting from their heat cycle. When I start to see them, you know, producing blood from their period, then I'll say, okay, that's day one. And we've always done it like that. I know um, some people go into the, you know, reproductive event and get progesterone testing to be sure the number is correct. We have studs in the house and Diesel, even though he's our young gun, um, he could tell us a couple days before uh, Maggie was coming into heat, he was trying to mount her. So even as young as he is, it is inexperienced, he could tell. Far, um, Frank is also a great one for telling. Um, if I have girls into heat, he can detect it before they actually start their cycle, normally a couple days. So um, that's why one of the pros and cons, one of the pros of having your own studs in house is they will tell you when your girls are prime. So basically uh, being prime means they've ovulated, they're ready to be uh, mated, and you usually will have success. If you wait too long after they've ovulated, you're gonna come in on the end of their cycle and you could have a singleton or two or something like that. That does happen. And um, if you go too early and you breed them, chances are by the time she ovulates, the semen is not viable anymore in her and they again will not get pregnant so that's what's the plans for today to get them out and get them you know reacquainted with each other and see how it goes farley's a love bug so is maggie so should be interesting so i just put them outside and as you can tell love is in the air now these two are tanks look at them oh my goodness I put the collars on just in case I needed to. Oh, he said, hold on. Hold on, Maggie Do. So this is just kind of to get them reacquainted. Um, so when they breed, I mean, I'll probably still, this will be her first time. So I'll probably, we're always um, there when it happens. We always assist because um, you never know. But, uh, He's, oh, he said, I don't think she's ready yet, buddy. He's hoping. And it is freezing out today, but I thought they need to see each other because um, it'll be mid next week when she starts to be around that day 11 mark that I was talking about. And as you can see, we have friendly Danes. Maggie's a tank and he is too. She makes him actually not look so big, but he's a hundred and almost 80 pounds. And I've been trying to slim him down a little bit, but uh, he likes to steal whoever's food didn't get eaten. His little, his main love, Abigail, um, he, he likes to steal her food. So I've been making sure that she gets her food and he, <laughs> gets a little bit less to try to slim little chubby down so but he's very happy with her and she's very happy playing with him Maggie's um, reason why I um, love uh, Maggie so much is she has such a great disposition and Farley also that's why I kept him because I have his parents Frank and Fiona and honestly you couldn't ask for a better a better uh, baby he's so sweet um, and Maggie comes from Hurley and um, Hurley and Eve Eva Beaver Ever, and uh, again those two are some all here chattering it's just my teeth so I'm gonna let them play for a little bit um, she's not prime he knows it he's a great indicator so but he's gonna have fun just horsing around with her and she loves to play so um, I'll probably get my coat on and maybe come back out and hang with him but it's super cold today it's windy and uh, 
So that's that. So this is the Valentine's t-shirt that I kind of came up with. I've only made one for myself. I really thought it was cute. I might change it a little bit to write head and tail, but this was my first, um, first run. So it's kind of like Valentine's. It was, you know, I love you from here to here and it's, so I made that. I like it, it's cute. Uh, didn't take me long. If anybody's interested um, in one of these t-shirts, you can always message us on Devoted Danes and I could whip you up, make you up, make you one. I can't talk today. Make you one. Um, so that's our plan. <coughs> so my next video, I should be able to tell you who's been bred and who hasn't been bred or hoping that both will be bred and we'll have two successful litters. Um, that's the plan. Um, it looks like Farley is ready for it. Yeah. He was all excited when he came downstairs and saw her. <laughs> they do play well together. So I can't wait to see what they'll produce. Maggie likes it because he's playful too. He's not just a stud that will, you know, bite and grab him and, and just breed. He's, he's playful. So that's what we like about it. Um, our studs too. They're sweet. And when we do offer studding too, on at Devoted Danes, we have a couple of ours. Farley's a studded out one, and so is Hurley. Hurley has some dates lined up, um, so we do offer studying. Diesel's not up for studying, um, so but we do have the two boys. And um, if anybody's interested in that, you can message Devoted Danes. I have had people asking about how do they. Um, you know, how do they find somebody to stud their their Dane with. Um, we don't normally do outside studying. We have in the past before we got more studs, but um, we really don't now. But we do stud out a couple of our boys um, and, and that works out pretty well. You know, for locally we, we have, um, you know within our area we are in new hampshire so and somebody has asked me if i ship semen i haven't done that um either we do have a reproductive vet so i mean if somebody was really interested i could find out and you know get all the information about that but we haven't done that we haven't had the need to do that um so we haven't and we do um, we have done AI, artificial insemination, before. That's how we ended up with Farley. But we prefer a natural tie uh, over that. I know some people, like different breeds, only do AIing. Um, big dogs, if they're agile and they can do it, I prefer a uh, natural tie. So that's what we shoot for. We have, you know, like I said, we have done AI. And we have been successful at it. But we typically don't prefer to do those. Um, cause it is, um, more of a regiment where when we do breedings, we'll do, if we have a tie, we'll skip a day and we'll do another tie with AI. We do it for a longer period of time and we do it every day. So it's constantly, you know, uh, we do it for, I think five days is what we'll do, but we collect and inject, um, into the female every day for five days. It is time consuming and, um, but we have done it. I mean, we have uh, Frank that was a big stud. So when he was younger, he was agile and able to produce his first litter. Second litter, um, he has more European in him. He wasn't able to keep himself up for very long. So we AI'd because we definitely love Frank and Fiona and that's how we ended up with Farley. And we did keep Farley and his brother Zeklin went um, to a home. So. But we do that, but we don't offer, we don't typically, uh, typically offer doing AI for other people. It's just too much, uh, too much work, too much scheduling. Um, I do work, um, Michaela works also. Um, we are in two different locations, but we have done breedings. We have done studdings, mostly Hurley, cause he's our solid, Farley spotted. So he doesn't, you know, it's kind of limited on what he can use for girls. But I preferably mostly like to just use him for my own because I know, um, you know, who he's been with. And because you do have to do different testing for that too to be sure that you're not transmitting any kind of sexual, you know, disease to the next, you know, just like 
humans, STDs, it happens in dogs too, so they do have testing for that to be sure that, you know, you're not passing anything. So to be responsible, you should do that in between breedings, especially for outside settings and you don't know who or where the female is coming from. And I mean, honestly, they probably feel the same way too about the male. But yet yeah, we do offer some studying. Um, <laughs> we do have a deposit list pretty long for magnolias. We've had some people on there for, we've had some people on there for a while that just wanted magnolias puppy. And then we've had, you know, other people that kind of got shuffled around because um, they didn't happen to get what they wanted or, you know, we had, seven and only one boy and you know six girls or some some kind of scenario like that so we've had to kind of bump people um so we try to take care of people that have been on our list for a while um i have some people that only email us and i try to keep them in the loop what's going on those are the people that technically will get insider information before we post it um i'll tell them hey you know finally you know we're going to be breeding this week or hey we had a um an ultrasound and it only showed two or one and this is what our plans are because we try to you know we try to deliver you know to everybody and make everybody satisfied but sometimes things don't always go as planned so I've only been taking deposits for Magnolia right now I haven't taken them for Nala because she did have a singleton last time and I want to be sure you know we have more um, puppies so once I confirm that she does have you know, over 30 days and, sh and just keep following her, we will take deposits for her puppies as well. Her and Deezy. So, um, Anala's are Meryl and um, Diesel's are Manta Tan Point. So, both should carry blue. Um, Diesel carries blue and piebald and Nala comes from Farley and Ebby. So, we have blue there. So, I'm thinking blue puppies that would be nice but we will also see their um variations diesel has been color tested nala hasn't so i'm not really sure because nala's um ebby's um comes from a, a blue fawn so she may carry that um, it is incredible the genetics and what they carry and what you don't think so that's eva in the background having a fit about something what eva um, probably because they're out here horsing around and she's not involved. She doesn't like that. But I'm letting them play. Maggie looks like she's already tired. She's kind of a chubby girl. <laughs> um, Farley's just being super sweet with her. This is her first breeding. So, you know, we're ready for it. And she's going to be a new mom. And I would also still consider Nala a new mom. So we'll have our hands full if they both... Um, <sighs> you know indeed get pregnant and produce a litter so we'll be busy we will definitely be staying in the rooms with them we always have to with new moms and uh this will be no different so um if you have any questions or anything just kind of put them in and i'll try to answer questions that you have um we're trying to hit 100 subscribers. We're kind of new to our channel. Um, I only probably do one video a week. So right now that's what I try to do the content for the week and see what I have and add it to one video. I don't think I would have time right now to do more than that. I am back to work. I do have, you know, my flea of birds and I do have uh, my Dane. So it keeps us busy. So, and then we do live on a, a farm. So there's always stuff to do. So again, if you have any questions, just either contact us at Devoted Danes on our Facebook or just leave questions here and I'll get to them as soon as I can. So this is Mama Eleanor. She is the one that is the puppy's mama. <laughs> as you can see, she's healed up. She looks great. She ended up with having a spay if you didn't remember or didn't follow us. So she's the boys to the twins. Her big boys are upstairs. But she's definitely healed up. She's doing great. She's back to herself. Um, she's just doing fabulous, as you can see. She's enjoying her time away from her boys. She still does go up and feed them, even though they are almost five weeks old on Monday, and they eat a lot. So these are the boys. A little update on the boys. They will be... <laughs> hey, handsome. 
They'll be five weeks old on Monday, and they're both extremely big. Um, this is George. George is up to 10 pounds. This is Emmett. He's 11 and a half pounds. <laughs> Last time I weighed him, which was a few days ago, so he's probably more like 12 pounds, I wouldn't doubt. But these are the two, um, two that we had from Ellie. So they're doing good. They do both have homes. So this is their area. They now have toys. This is their potty area. As you can see, they use it. So this is how we train. We start off with just a little bit of shavings in the middle. So they will get up, toddle over, go pee, you know, poop. And then as they get older, they know they have to track down here. As you can see, you can see the poop in there. So they're definitely using their space. And we try to keep, um, the potty area big so you know if they're toddling in like oh george has got to go he's going in he's going pee pee hey emmett so when they do get to go home i just tell the owners take some pine shavings put them in the yard where you want these boys to go potty and they will um some people use the doorbell system we just use the shavings um all our danes um that we <laughs> look at him open um, all the Danes that come through devoted Danes has the same system so even um, Callie's litter she has her whelping box right now she has shavings in the middle you'll see and eventually um, they'll slide them to one side she also has seven in her litter I only have these two guys and they have this massive I mean it's big their whelping box but this is also for a litter of 12 so 12 could fit in here you know easily and stuff too so and look Emmett's going potty on his own too over there so I mean I started training these little boys at three weeks old to use the potty in here and um they definitely do so <laughs> someone's trying to poop and someone's trying to walk there's only two of them so it really does help out if you have a big litter of 12 puppies you could literally clean the area and then come back in five minutes and they would be poop everywhere like you hadn't cleaned it so see he went potty george is out here he said am i gonna eat and i just went potty i made room <laughs> same with emmett but they just they've already ate and they've been with their mommy this morning so they're probably eating four times a day with big food and then um, mommy still does come in with them she loves these boys so she lets them nurse because, I mean, they are still young, even though they're big. And he looks like he's ready to go home at eight weeks, but he's only going to be five weeks on Monday. He's a big puppy. He may be our biggest. Motley might lose his title as biggest puppy from Devoted Danes. But we love all our little scoots that come out, no matter how big or small they are. Um, Callie's litter is... Um, considerably smaller because Callie is our most petite Dane um, but Callie's babies do grow up to be pretty big we have um, one litter that she had last year and those little babies are big so it doesn't matter if they start big or if they start small they all end up big <laughs> so it's not time to eat I just came up to say hi guys so they do get up here and they cry for their mummy too and they have a gate so they can see anybody going by if they want to and um some of them the big dogs do come in and visit these guys grandma fion loves to see them and she'll give them a couple licks for the day yeah so they're doing good they already have their appointment at eight weeks set up at our vet um, so we set that up pretty early especially with the COVID and the curbside so, but these two do play together. I'll be watching them on their surveillance. They're in here playing. You know, I'm just glad there's two because one would be hard. Yep, having two, they at least have each other and they have a playmate. And I did put toys down, but they haven't really realized they're playing. They're really for play yet. So they'll get it. But that's the boys. They're doing great. You saw mom. Mom's doing fantastic. And this is her last litter. <laughs> hey hey you little boys and I usually change their bedding I mean because there's only two and they go potty train I really don't have to change their bedding as much as if I had uh, 12 of them in here so they're doing really good but I did change their bedding because they do have pee pee accidents yep 
We do. You don't have to tell everybody. So that's them.